today, with about 24 days until the presidential election, we've had the biggest poll in the entire cycle done by Pew Research show exactly why this map you're looking at to your right of the screen can be a reality, okay? Pew Research poll, which is pretty much the contemporary to Gallup um, polling, is somewhat historically massive, okay? So we're talking about a poll that has over 4,000 registered voters being surveyed, where the average industry standard is going to have maybe only 1,000 respondents. And so 4x the result, and let's see how accurate that might be. So as you can see here, the final result is pointing towards a Kamala small edge in the popular vote of, let's say, if you look at it here, 500,000 votes out of over 150 million, and you have her winning 48.1% of the vote compared to Donald's 47.7%. The former president also ends up with over a million over the 2020 margin. In fact, in 2020, he got 74 official million votes. Here, he's getting 75.6 just for that. And also we have 312 electoral votes for Donald Trump and 226 for Kamala. But let's break down why this actually came out that, the way it, it did. In fact, we have percentages for every single swing state as well. So let's get right into it. Now, the headline, if you look at this on modern media, it's going to say something along the lines that Harris leading Trump by 1% in Pew Research Poll, the biggest one ever. And the truth is that this is still really good news for Donald Trump. Again, for Harris to be leading by one officially in the popular vote is really, really good. If you even look here, obviously Kamala is beating Donald Trump by about half of a percentage point in the popular vote, and yet Trump wins by uh, about 80 or 90 electoral votes. So the popular vote is not the end-all be-all. It's just a corollary. But that confidence interval and the percentage therein is vital into understanding who's going to win this election. So like I said, Harris leading by one is actually fantastic news for Donald Trump. As in most polls, Harris is leading by like two and a half or something like this. So, you know, for Harris to be doing way worse than that is actually fantastic because think about it if harris is winning the popular vote normally by two in most polls but then this one has her winning it by 0.5 then you add 1.5 into all the swing states odds are trump will win them all and hence why he is in this poll but let's break down why the poll came out the way that it did so if you look at these we have breakdowns for all the categories. In fact, I even have the Google document that they use to source every single little aspect of it. But let's just break down the big um, items. And so right now, as you can see here, Pew Research has Trump winning almost 20% of Trump-Biden 2020 voters, while Kamala is only winning 2% of the two-time Trump voters. Well, what does that mean for you guys? Basically, there were some people that voted for Trump in 2016 and then voted Biden in 2020. Um, largely due to the pandemic and just craziness. These are usually middle-aged white guys, suburban women, stuff like this. Um, that being said, that, that's why someone, or sorry, a state like Pennsylvania might have flipped one side over the other, if you know what I mean. And so anyway, if you look here, Kamala is only winning 2% though of double Trump voters. What that means is that Trump has virtually every single voter that has been there for him eight years in a row, but also he's flipping back the people he lost in the last election. Obviously, if you look at a place Place like Pennsylvania, Trump narrowly won Pennsylvania in 2016 by, let's say, one point, and Biden also won it by one point. And so that means that, you know, that 2% out of 100, you know, some Trump people from 16 went to Biden in 20. Most people are mostly coming back predominantly by almost 20% in order of that number. And so that's awesome news for Donald Trump. If you look at the national polls, too, you see that generally, um, as of early October of 2020, Biden was leading by 10 points. Harris is only leading by 1.8 on average in RCP, the real clear politics aggregate that I use in every video. That's an 8.2% net swing to Donald Trump, even if, like I said, oh my God, he's losing the popular vote. Again, that doesn't matter when it comes to the election. Of course, in a boutique sense, you want to have the best optics. You want to make sure you get the majority. But then again, the ruling majority is not necessarily a literal voting majority. Keep that in mind. So to have the power, you need the Electoral College. You want some extra clout like Bush did in 04? Go ahead and get the majority popular vote. That's fine. But it's not at all necessary. But also, keep this in mind. Pew Research polls, in fact, have had um, people... Or sorry, it had Biden winning this time four years ago, like to the day, October 10th, I think, 2020, had Biden w leading Trump like 52 to 42. So for them to have um, Harris and Trump effectively tied is actually pretty remarkable, to tell you the truth. But let's actually break down the demography, too. So like the video if you like the content thus far, subscribe if you haven't yet. Now let's get into the nerdy, nerdy aspect. Let's get into the actual numbers. All right, I don't have glasses, but we are totally geeking out here. So we have age as a bracket here. Obviously, Trump is doing a little bit better with young people, as we all know. I mean, if you've been around frat guys, you know how they feel about this. The Nelk podcast, you know, full send, all that sort of thing. 
a lot of people don't even get the terms I'm using, uh, happy dad, you know, those sort of things are trending Republican. The UFC, MMA, these all are all institutions that young men are a part of or whatever, and they're trending more Republican. But on the other hand, again, women are also an aspect that is somewhat complicated. That being said, you look at uh, age, like I said, youth are going more Republican. Old people are staying about the same, but Republicans win old people already, so that's just fine. Now, you look at race and education. This is where it really matters, in my opinion. You look at Latinos. Latinos are trending Democrat. Um, sorry, are historically Democrat, but are trending Republican. Now, how much of a difference is the question? Because in polling minorities, it's really difficult because you'll have one poll that's decent, having you know Trump losing, let's say, black people by 50 percentage points of a margin, and then another one where he's losing them by 70. And you know they're both like big margins anyway, so you might not even notice a difference. And it's my job, basically, that I put upon myself, like a sort of Damocles of nitpicking uh, polls to say, okay, what's the actual fact? of the matter. And so that's what we're going to break down right now. So Donald Trump is leading with men by eight percentage points. Women, on the other hand, he's also um, losing by negative nine percentage points. And so the question is, who's going to turn out more? Um, that's not a good number for Donald Trump. Anyway, if you look here, you see this right here. You see that uh, white men, or sorry, white people in general, Trump's winning by 14. You see that black people, he's losing by 55, which is pretty good. In fact, there's a video uh, that's about a minute long where Barack Obama is now on the stump for uh, Kamala Harris and is basically browbeating black men, saying black men that vote for Trump, that it's unacceptable. Uh, and that, you know, the Trump economy was good, but it was his economy and that Trump didn't do nothing, which is not going to land. And, you know, the fact that they're trying to, you know, actively be like, hey, black people, stop it, stop it is like their slave runners trying to catch you from get, leaving the plantation. And so what that likely means is that they feel like there's fugitives, which means that they're going to what? The Republican camp. And so that's great news for Donald Trump, and the facts bear it out. Uh, again, you know, John McCain lost to Obama and only got like 3 or 6% of the black vote, which is nuts. Those are dictator margins. I don't think Putin gets those numbers. Anyway, um, you know, Romney gets like 8% of the black vote. Trump ends up with like maybe 11% last election but now if he's at 14 that's a step in the right direction again mostly due to young black men not black men but young black men i'm saying people you know 30 ish that's the demographic that we're talking about also hispanics hispanics trump is losing um by about 16 percentage points which is really good because again hispanics have been voting democrat my entire life and then times three okay ever since like the civil rights era that's been a solid demographic for democrats i'll tell you what and also keep in mind um, losing them by 16 is a good margin relatively. In 2016, I think he lost them by like 30-ish. And so for him to be losing it by 16 is actually a big improvement, believe it or not. In fact, if you look at this, and let's, so as you can see here, we have the 2020 electoral prospect. What I mean is that this is like basically what it looked like for 2020 and so far as like black support, white support, everything. So let's move the Latinos from Trump losing them um, by this margin to what they're predicting nowadays. If you look at it that way, you see you see this, look at Arizona, you see how it goes red, Georgia goes red, and you keep going, Nevada goes red. So you see how, you know, cutting the lead the Democrats over Hispanics in America, if you cut it in half and still lose them, you're actually flipping three different states, and Trump is near victory on just the Mexican vote and the Latino vote in general on its own, on its own. You add in the black difference in support, and then all of a sudden you flip these two states of Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. You see how much of a difference that makes? So again, not even touching white people, which again are a, a Republican constituency by margin of uh, support. And that's not even touching Asians either, because again, Asians are not that relevant outside of maybe Nevada and the swing states. Um, but anyway, you can see how this is all great news for the former president. Huge number right here. Most people wouldn't catch this. Down at the bottom of this page almost, you'll notice that of 2020 non-voters, people that did not participate in the last election, Trump is leading Harris by one point. So that's 45 to 44. Now, consider this. This is important for a few reasons. Most people that didn't vote last time, even though it was a very high turnout election, you know, with the mail-ins and everything, if those people didn't vote, it's most likely because they were underage, right? Like, for example, I couldn't vote. I was 17 during the last election. And so for that reason, it stands to believe that of the people that didn't vote, a majority or an outsized portion of them are young, and yet Trump is still winning that, which means that the young people are really turning out for Trump. And so that's actually a sign that most people wouldn't pick up on. So that's another good indication for Donald Trump. 
Again, another super subtle read by me right here. Okay, so see this. I'm going to snipe it. All right, so of people that didn't vote in 2016 but then voted for Trump for the first time ever in 2020, um, Trump wins that by 93% and 3% are supporting Harris. Okay, but if you look at the same thing but reversed where they didn't vote in 2016 but voted Biden in 20, only 87% support Harris and actually 7% support Trump. So what that means is that Trump has a net four percent of the vote share of the people that are in the reverse scenario which again very nerdy i get it but seriously that's a big deal Alrighty, folks so just for a final aside here the reason maybe why kamala harris is losing support among latinos such as myself is likely because of this okay charlie kirk posted this video apparently kamala harris was caught using a teleprompter at her univision which is a Spanish outlet, by the way, Univision Town Hall. Producers panic and turn off the prompter midway through the answer. Why did Univision allow this? Oh, mm, interesting. Okay, let's watch. Victim of crime. Are you a Republican? Are you a Democrat? The only question I ever ask is, are you okay? You see this? You see the teleprompter? One and two? Again, she's having literal answers for a town hall the whole point of the town hall is that you get peppered with random stuff you have to deal with the real people's problems you have to make it up on the spot uh, as far as i know people like bill clinton democrats that were actually talented 30 years ago had to come up with it on the spot damn maybe even obama had to actually do it the real way trump does now but apparently Kamala is literally getting answers fed to her. And, you know, the complaint was this whole time, oh, you know, Joe Slow, he needs a note card. He needs, uh, you know, to, to know everything beforehand. But at least he had the excuse of being over 20 years older than Kamala and being cognitively on a downward slope. But Kamala seems to have not been on a downward slope cognitively, but just started at the bottom and just stayed there. And so she needs to be rehearsing lines in front of the mirror, in this case, a teleprompter, which is insane. This is malpractice politically. Because she's not telling people, hey, by the way, this is a town hall, but I'm going to be reading uh, pre-rehearsed uh, pre answers. I mean, the whole implication and the whole point of consenting to like, hey, I'm going to go to a town hall. It's because I want to listen firsthand to what they're going to tell me, not, oh, my God, they're going to rehearse this prior hand. Do you think anybody in that crowd knows what's going on here? I mean, do you think there's a reason why the TV is actually coned off so that only she can read it from like that angle? Interesting. And, you know, what happened here most likely is that the cameraman just zoned out and then turned the button on where it's like, oh, showing the back shoulder camera when in reality it should have been showing the other angle. So this is probably just an accident that just screwed her over big time. And sadly, we have seen over the last two weeks since Hurricane Helene. As you can see, whoever was controlling like the like the overall like, camera control, he was like, oh, sh oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know, and then they're like, shut it down. Because again, they were showing the teleprompter for only like 10 seconds out of a town hall that most likely took like, let's say an hour and a half. So small little things like that just show the truth for what it is. So there you go. Insane. Anyway, so that's more good news for the Trump campaign. Only a few weeks until the election. I cannot wait. Like the video if you haven't liked it yet. Subscribe if you haven't yet. More great things to come, baby. See y'all in the next one. Adios.